Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Robin Dunbar from Grid Metals. Robin, cesium. We were talking about cesium this morning. Let's start there. Tell us more about your cesium project. It's the Falcon West Cesium Project. It's located in southeast Manitoba, uh, right next to the, um, the Trans-Canada Highway, an hour outside of Winnipeg. Uh, it's an occurrence of cesium. We have cesium in drill holes and um, hosted in polycite, which is the, the, the mineral that uh, the industry looks for. Um, and we are currently drilling uh, in the range of 60 holes at the project um, in, a defense, uh, in an attempt to you know, put together a resource and define um, you know, where the mineralization is and how big it is. So that's going on right now and a very exciting time for the, for the company in that respect. In the course of the conversation, you explained a number of facts about cesium I didn't know, including that the Chinese control 85% of the world's cesium supply. But what was intriguing to me was your location uh, from Tanko. Can you explain that to our audience? Yeah, so uh, Sinomine, which is the company that controls, the Chinese company that controls 85% of the world's cesium market, has a Canadian operation, which they purchased in 2019. And uh, at the Tanko mine, um, they have mined uh, cesium uh, from underground and the they create a concentrate, and then they put it through a cesium chemical plant, which they have on site. And that chemical plant is only one of two in the world um, outside of China. So it's, um, you know, it, it tells us that worst case, we have a place to send uh, material, um, you know, an hour away by truck, and uh, it's a very high grade material. So, um, you know, that that is a, uh, has been a very interesting option for the company. And we've had a lot of conversations uh, with the Tango people and Sinomine people over the years about, you know, potentially processing material. But there's also a real focus in the Canadian industry about, you know, uh, North American supply and how to create a supply chain in, in North America. And our recent strategic investor in the company is very interested in that. Um, they're an industry player. And so we think there's going to be a lot of interest in creating a, a separate North American supply chain. And if I heard you right, you know, cesium is used for things like atomic clocks and you are well-funded and your drilling program is quite fast. Can you just go through that? Yeah. yeah. What, what's interesting is the, the, the cesium zone that we're drilling uh, is almost right at surface. So we're drilling, uh, we're hitting the target, you know, it's a 10 meter pegmatite that sometimes has uh, uh, polycite in the middle of it. And that starts at about 20 meters, uh, you know, down hole. So our, our holes are generally, you know, 40 to 50 meters in, in length, which is short in the, in the, in the business. So we can do a lot of holes and um, it, we can do them quickly. And the other thing is that the, when we go to mine it, hopefully it all holds together. Um, it'll be re relatively uh, inexpensive to extract because it'll be like a quarry. It'll be uh, near surface and we don't need uh, tailings um, or a big mill to process cesium. You, you, you run it like a quarry, you, mine it and crush it and, and use ore sorting. And that creates a high value concentrate. So it's very unique in that uh, respect as a, as a metal um, in terms of the processing. High value, but very low capex. So flipping from Falcon West to the Makawa project, can you tell us more about your nickel project? Yeah, so, so our, our project in Manitoba is the Makawa project. And we, we compare it to uh, the, the Ring of Fire uh, Eagle's Nest project. And everybody saw the advertising that um, the Ontario government did during the Blue Jay Games for the Ring of Fire. And the, and the main project up there is Eagle's Nest. And that was a, a nickel uh, deposit um, that is now owned by an Australian company. The, the, the model that we've used in our joint venture with tech is the Eagle's Nest. So we've, we, it's a brand new discovery. We have nickel on surface. We've flown it, and now we're drilling it. So you know, we, we think there's a lot of um, similarities. We know there's a lot of similarities between where we are in Manitoba, two hours outside of Winnipeg and the Ring of Fire. And, you know, we look forward to uh, drill results. So we're trying to make a new discovery that we think will be extremely valuable um, in, uh, in Manitoba. Timelines for your projects. Can you give us an update on what shareholders should be looking forward to in the next quarter? Right now we have uh, drills going at both projects. So this is a you know pitiful time for the company. Um, as I said earlier, we're drilling you know about sixty holes at Falcon West before Christmas, and we're going to drill about twenty five hundred meters at Maqua with Tech 
uh, as our joint venture partner there. So in the next quarter, we're going to find out a lot about the, um, you know, both projects and we're really at the discovery phase uh, for both projects. So, you know, we think that's a, a gives us a really good potential for re-rating of the, of the company's stock and our projects really put them on the map. So exciting time for, for grid metals right now. I often tell Investor News audience members to go to the LinkedIn account of the CEO. And Robin, you have an extensive professional career in the industry. What do you plan on applying in your management style with grid metals moving forward? Yeah, you know, I think that the a big part of a, you know, running small juniors is is to to look for the opportunities and and capitalize on the opportunities when you have them and then leveraging those opportunities. So, you know, we've spent the last period of time getting these properties, getting them set up, getting them ready, getting them permitted. And and now, you know, we want to let our exploration team do their thing. And, and start, you know, with success, then we're going to start, okay, what, what's the next steps and how do we develop them? So, you know, that at, at both projects are, you know, slightly different um, uh, roadmaps, but uh, they're both pretty exciting. So that, that's what we're looking at right now is, is, is letting the exploration run its course and then, and then planning our next moves for the projects. For those of you interested in finding out more about the Makawa Nickel Project and the Falcon West Cesium Project, please go to the following website. Robin, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tracy.